Now, of course, the India-Canada diplomatic standoff continues to deepen and a lot of tit-for-tat diplomacy has been playing out in the past few days. Exactly. Seen there that. have been exchanges after exchanges and I don't want to put a term to it, what kind of exchanges, but they have been rather intense. Justin Trudeau has meanwhile repeated his claims of accusing India's involvement accusing India of being involved in the killing of Khalistani terrorists. But India continues to give a strong response and has shunned all these unsubstantiated claims. Now, Trudeau addressed media on the sidelines of the UNGA on Thursday. He said that there are credible reasons to believe that Indian agents were involved in the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijjar, a wanted terrorist in India. However, he fell short of giving any proof or any evidence for the second time now. Interestingly, he also underlined India's growing importance on the world stage. He pointed that China, that Canada wants to continue working with India and is not looking to provoke the country. There is no question uh, that India is a country of growing importance uh, and a country that we uh, need to continue uh, to work with uh, not just in the region, but around the world. And we're not looking to provoke uh, or, or um, cause problems. But we are unequivocal around the importance of the rule of law and unequivocal about the importance of protecting Canadians and standing up for our values. That's why we call upon the government of India to work with us Meanwhile, amid the India-Canada diplomatic row, pressure also seems to be building on Canada's Five Eyes allies, who are also India's crucial partners, and have stopped short of supporting Trudeau. They say they're in touch with both sides and are waiting for the investigation to be completed. Now, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, however, clarified that there is no wedge between U.S. and Canada over the issue. We support the efforts that they are undertaking in this investigation, and we have also been in touch with the Indian government as well. And I will leave it at that for today, only to say that I have seen in the press some efforts to try to drive a wedge between the United States and Canada on this issue. And I firmly reject the idea that there is a wedge between the U.S. and Canada. We have deep concerns about the allegations, and we would like to see this investigation carried forward. Now, the events in the past few days have brought India-Canada ties at their lowest. Let's quickly summarize what led to such a situation. On Tuesday, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said his government had credible allegations, linking Hardeep Singh Nijjar's killing with the agents of the government of India. And this allegation, it was coupled with expelling of a senior Indian diplomat. India was quick to react. It called these allegations absurd and motivated and also expelled a senior Canadian diplomat. Later on, Canada issued a travel advisory urging its citizens to exercise high degree of caution while traveling to various regions of India. And in a tit-for-tat move, India also issued an advisory for Indian nationals and those traveling to Canada. Now, it mentioned that in view of growing anti-India activities and politically condoned hate crimes and criminal violence in Canada, they need to be cautious. They will use the words politically condoned, you know, so... India has taken a firm stance. Of course, the Canadian government has rejected this advisory and has marked itself as a safe country. Not just this, on Thursday, India also suspended visa services for Canadian citizens over what it says are security threats against Indian diplomats in Canada. Now, this indicates that the row is now much beyond the issue of Khalistan. Trade ties between two nations have already been hit and now the large Indian diaspora is also concerned. Now, according to reports, some Indian students are already struggling for food and housing in Canada. And now they have been warned as anti-India activities increase in Canada. Reportedly, some Hindu families are worried and are receiving threats from extremists as well. Meanwhile, another terrorist has been shot dead on Canadian soil. Khalistani extremist Sukhtol Singh has been killed in gang rivalry. Two rival groups have claimed responsibility for the attack. The world is watching as the spat escalates and with each passing day, the Canadian Prime Minister is losing face. This as Ottawa still has not shared the credible evidence that Trudeau claims to have. Meanwhile, critics are questioning if these allegations are a mere plot 
to garner political mileage from Khalistani separatists in Canada. Now for more on this, we have with us in studio Mr. Raymond Vickery, who is a former U.S. Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Trade Development and Senior Associate at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so Welcome much for having me. <laughs> and uh, we're also being uh, joined by Daniel Bodman, who is a senior correspondent for uh, the National Telegraph. He's joining us from uh, Toronto. Thanks Welcome for having on. me. Now, uh, Mr. Vickery, I want to start by asking you, we've heard of credible reasons and credible allegations. We've yet to see any credible evidence, though. After all that's transpired, Trudeau stuck to his initial narrative on Niger's death. But once again, as I said, no credible evidence. What do you make of this? Well, I think that uh, it's very plain that this is a very serious matter. Uh, and it is very extraordinary. Uh, for a leader of a country to stand up in his own parliament uh, without any facts uh, and make the kind of charges that were made. Now, if you look uh, closely at the first statement in uh, the parliament, it says potential. Uh, right. There are equivocal words involved. Uh, and so you just don't do that, uh, it, that sort of thing, and it drives uh, a difficulty between great democracies right. around the world. Uh, you know, I want to come to you, Daniel, uh, after taking from what Raymond said, interference, foreign interference, that is essentially what Canada is, you know, blaming India for. But, you know, there is, it's a widely known fact that China has had major foreign interference in Canada. There were also two citizens of, Canadian citizens who were held hostage in, in China. But you never heard Trudeau taking that to the world stage or talking so vocally about it. Talk to us about the dichotomy in Trudeau's response here. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the hypocrisy and the gaslighting from, from Trudeau. And hypocrisy the and gaslighting, right. Yes, has really affected India. And as a Canadian, I can empathize. Our previous guest, Raymond, was right about everything. This is very serious. I will add one thing. This is a very serious scenario being led by a very unserious person in Justin Trudeau. We just came up, Canada's under the big specter of Chinese foreign interference. We have um, just, and it goes so deep, right? It's it's potentially the CCP using WeChat to, uh, you know, threaten and misinform Chinese Canadians to vote for the Liberals because they felt they were more um, uh, friendly. That happened. How much did the Liberals know? How much did they not know? There was backdoor channels potentially to keep the two Michaels in jail, the two kidnapped citizens. So it was bad. It was really, really, it still is really, really, really bad. Uh, and this was the specter in Canada, foreign interference um, in China. So by switching it, um, Justin Trudeau has really muddied the waters here because right. there was one incident of foreign interference where we were trying to get him to kick a diplomat out that we had evidence was threatening an active sitting MP in Michael Chong. It took him like a week to do it. And it had to be right. a nationwide effort to get him to do this. Right. Then all of a sudden, with no evidence, out of the blue, goes into parliament and kicks out a senior Indian diplomat a allied nation that has been friendly right. to us since inception versus a hostile nation, which he bows over to. And, you know, the, the nation he once said in 2015 to get elected the first time. He admires the basic da dictatorship of China. Daniel, I just want to take from what, what you just said, uh, you know, regarding, uh, I'm going to quote Trudeau from what he said in the latest presser, we will protect our citizens. We are crystal clear on that. He spoke a lot about rule of law. Of course, I'll come to the irony in that later. But these are Trudeau's words, citizens that Trudeau wants to protect. They include designated terrorists who are wanted in India. And I just want to know from you, there is no doubt that Trudeau gains from this specific vote bank. How far is Trudeau willing to go to appease his vote bank back home? So I, I, I'm going to push back on this, OK? Mm. The majority of Sikhs, as we know, are not Calistani. Of course, um, that goes without saying. Canada, right. it's not Calistani. The previous prime minister, Stephen Harper, right. made huge inroads in the Sikh community. And zero Palestinian nonsense. Right. So, to, to, yes, yeah, so you can win the, the vote bank politics here. Uh, I, I, I see it more as sort of an ideological thing. The Palestinians, the Islamists, the communists, all of them have managed to infiltrate uh, to some degree right. the, the modern progressive movement, which Justin Trudeau is an ideological adherent to. So it, it could be that, but I, I never underestimate the, 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 the power of, of, a, of an ideologically motivated person. Um, if, if 
And, right. and definitely, you know, just to clarify that once again, Sikhs and Khalistanis, we draw the line in between. It's not the same. Right. Absolutely. Oh, I'm, I'm not, I, I wasn't accusing. I just wanted for in case Canadians are watching this or, or others, just to just to parse it out. The, the, right. the vote bank, like if you want to get the Sikh vote, do right. what Stephen Harper did. Go to the Sikh community, right. talk to them like human beings, say, you know, you came to Canada for opportunities, we're going to offer you jobs and freedom, religious freedom, family freedom, this freedom, that right. freedom, lower taxes. It works on them because right. they're regular people. Um, and and if you want to win votes, you can do it that way, or you can go into Khalistani Gurdwaras and uh, stick your head in the sand and just hope that you know a bunch of right. Uh, right. money falls to the offers of the political party. Right. Oh, well, Daniel, thank you so yes. much for that. Now, sir, coming back to you, it's been dubbed it for tad diplomacy. India has suspended visa services in Canada. Can one expect Canada to respond in a similar manner? How do you assess they would respond going well, forward? Well, I think that the danger here, of course, is escalation. One does uh, one thing, one does another, and pretty soon uh, it spins out of control. I do think that uh, in the last 24 hours, there has been enough pressure uh, put on the prime minister, particularly regarding the absence of facts that uh, he's stepping back a bit. If you look at his uh, presser statement of uh, last evening, uh, he has words of praise for India. He says he's not going to provoke. Right. Uh, he wants to cooperate. He wants, uh, it's a strange way to uh, seek cooperation though by standing up in parliament and making these allegations. So I don't think uh, at this point, while uh, there is this danger of tit for tat, that it can be expected that it will be an exact uh, sort of uh, retribution uh, for the visa uh, uh, action which has been taken by India. Right, and I think that's what's left everyone scratching their heads at this point, the frivolity and the frivolous manner in which these allegations were made. Now, Trudeau also mentioned that he stands for rule of law. Do you find a grave irony here, given how Khalistani terrorists have been allowed to vandalize and desecrate Hindu temples and attack Indian diplomats well, in Canada? Well, I think uh, there is a lack of appreciation uh, for uh, the extent of the problem of terrorism uh, worldwide from uh, non-traditional uh, sources. Uh, if you don't understand uh, Khalistan and the separatist uh, movement, then perhaps you're willing to, uh, to, to go uh, along with it. Uh, but it is uh, incumbent upon uh, a leader to understand these things. The business right. of separatism is extremely serious. In the United States, we lost more people right. in the Civil War than we've lost in all the other wars combined. Right. And so you don't do this kind of thing which right. will provoke that kind of terrorism. Right. Daniel, Absolutely. I just want to come, uh, come back to you on this. Uh, you know, Trudeau also said that India is a country of growing importance and a country that we need to continue to work with. Do you feel he's a little insecure regarding his Indo-Pacific ambitions if he ruffles and completely severs ties with India now? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't think we can sever ties with India completely. Right. I think that's an insane move. I, I mean, there's been a lot of insane diplomatic and geopolitical moves on the Canadian side in the last 72, 48 hours, however long it's been. Uh, you know, one of the one of the things I will I will tell the Indian people is never try and get into the mind of Justin Trudeau. There there is no way to to reason this one out, find out what he's thinking, what are this man's goals or ambitions when it comes to foreign policy. It, it, so what's he planning now? Yeah, he probably realizes. I mean, if you read between the lines of a statement, right? Potential link to maybe an, an Indian official. It's a report. It's not evidence. We have a, an intelligence report, and then when asked if he has a lot of evidence, he didn't say a lot. So. It seems to me, reading between the lines, knowing Justin Trudeau, he doesn't want to lie on camera. So I don't think he's lying. I think there is a report that says there could be a connection to the Indian government, which would make sense because the Indian government listed this guy as a terrorist. Do you not expect the government to, of India to be no, keeping but, uh, tabs? These, on uh, you know, allegations have been to completely, you know, uh, India said that these are absurd and motivated. And right. definitely there has been no proof that has come to light. So we can't take again, it. Again, once again, there is no credible evidence. Evidence and, uh, at all. As Shivan mentioned, right. these are absurd and motivated comments that have been made right now in a rather frivolous manner. I'd just like to reiterate that. Right. Also, that being said, Mr. Raymond Vickery and Mr. <laughs> Daniel Gordon, Daniel. thank you so much for joining us on the show with your insights and perspective on this. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me.